Hello, welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can create halftone images like this one using tile clones. Stick with us. So to start with, what are halftones? Halftones are just a way that we can represent graduated tones and still only be printing in one colour. So for example, newspapers used to use halftone photos because they could only print with solid black ink they used half tones to create the photographic images. So to get started, I think we're going to start with a couple of simple examples so we can see what's going on and then we move on to recreating our photo. So first thing I'm going to need to do is just create something for us to create a half tone from. So I'm just going to come over, I'm going to get my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a rectangle. I just want this to be a white background. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to left click on the white to give it a white fill colour. So this is going to be our background. Now we need something in the foreground. So I'm just going to come up and grab the circles and ellipses tool. And I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions and just drag out a perfect circle. So about there will do me I think. So this time I'm going to get rid of the stroke. So I'm just going to hold down shift and click on the X which will get rid of the stroke colour. And then I want this to be black. So I'm going to left click on the black to give it a black fill colour. So we're going to want some graduated colour here so we can see how our halftone works. So I'm going to open up my fill and stroke dialog box and click on the button up here. So now we've got our fill and stroke dialog box open. Down the bottom we've got blur. So all I'm going to do with our shape selected is if we drag this blur over, that'll do me. I'm going to come up, get my selection tool. I'm going to drag a box over both of these. I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to come up to group. I'm going to duplicate them. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate the shapes. And we can get a hold of this and just move it down. I'm going to get my nodes tool. So I can just click in and select individual shapes. I'm going to take the background and I'm going to turn this now to black. And I'm going to click on the foreground circle and I'm going to turn that to white. So now we've got two examples to work with. First thing I want to do is create a shape that we can use to clone. So for this example, I'm just going to make a circle. So I'm going to hold down control to constrain the proportions and I'm just going to drag out a circle. I change to my uh, selection tool. I'm going to get rid of the stroke. So I'm going to come down, get rid of the stroke on it. We change the color as well, I think. We make it red so we can see it. And then we can bring this down. So if we open up our tiled clones dialog box, we can come up to edit, down to clone, and then down to Tiled Clone. So in our Tiled Clones dialog box, we've got a number of tabs along the top which give us control on how our Tiled Clones are created and how they work. We're only going to be looking at a couple of these in this video. If you want to learn more, I'll link a couple of videos where I go through each of the tabs and explain what they do. But for this one, we're just going to be looking at Shift and Trace, primarily Trace. So in Symmetry, we're going to be using Simple Translation. In here, we've got a selection of different options that we can use. These just allow us to create our tiled clones in different ways so we can use rotation, reflection. We're going to stick with simple translation. If we now look down at the bottom here, this is where we can tell Inkscape how many clones we want to create. We can either do it using rows and columns. So if we know how many rows and how many columns of tiled clones we need, we can use that. I'm going to be using width and height. If you not sure exactly how many tiled clones you need, this is an easier way of doing it. So we're going to leave it on width and height. So in here we have the width and height of the area that we want to cover. So we want to cover this black blurred circle. We can look at the top and try and work it out from the top, but I find the easiest way to work out the area you need is to just come over, grab the rectangles tool. We can come back over, drag a rectangle over the whole lot. We give it a red stroke and we get rid of the fill colour. So now you can sit here and adjust this till it covers all of the image that you want to cover. We don't want to create more tile clones than we need. So now we've got a rectangle that represents the area that we want to cover with tile clones. We can look up at the top and we can see dimensions at the top. So width, we've got 91.875 and height, we've got 90. So I want to make it 90 by 90. So if we come down to the bottom here, we can put 90 by 90. One thing you do want to check is you're using the same units. So down here we've got millimetres and up the top here we've got millimetres. 
So we know that if we use the, these dimensions, it's going to work out correct when we do it. So now we need to move our tile into place. So I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm going to get hold of my circle and I'm just going to drag it over. I'm going to drop it on this top corner. I'm going to click on the rectangle and press delete to get rid of that. Now we need to select what we want to clone. So we select our circle and then we can come down and press create. And that's just created clones covering the area that we wanted. So to create our halftone effect, we need it to look at the image below our clones and adjust the size of each of the clones depending on the image below. So to do that, we're going to come over and we're going to go to the trace tab at the top here. You've got this top tick box, tracer drawing under the clone spray items. So we're going to click on that so it all works. So first up, we've got number one, what it picks from the drawing. So what it looks at in the image that it's tracing. So we can either have color, opacity, red, green, blue, hue, saturation, or lightness. I'm going to be looking at lightness. So I've got my L selected. So section two is for tweaking our values. So this is, for example, if you've got an image that isn't particularly bright, you'll get smaller clones. We can adjust the gamma values and that will, we can increase the size of our clones and get the optimal image. Randomization is just that, just adds a little bit of randomization to the values. Invert, we get to in a minute, we're going to use that for creating our tiled clones on this example. So once we've got a value for our lightness, how are we going to apply that to the tiled clones? So we can either do it with presence. This is just a probability of whether or not the tile is going to appear. Each time you use it, you'll get a different result. We can use color opacity, but what we're going to be using is size. So we've got size ticked. And this section just remains the same, no matter which tab you're on. This is just setting up for creating our clones. So now we've set those bits up, making sure that we've got our tick ticked at the top here so it actually works. We can come down and we can press create again. And this time it takes into account the lightness of the image underneath our clones. So we can see as it gets brighter, so the circles become smaller. If we come over to gamma correction, we can quickly change that. If we change that to three and then press create, we can see that it, it picks up more of the dark areas. So we can make that the other way. So if we come in here and put a minus in front and we can come down, press create, then it works the other way around. So we lose some of the brighter areas. So we set that back to zero and we come down and have a look at our other example. So I'm going to, I'm going to nick our circle again and drag it down, put it roughly where we want it. So again, I'm going to, with everything set up, I'm just going to come down and press create. Now this time, when we press create, it's the outside that's darker. But when we're going to use it in a moment, we want it to be where it's brightest that we get the largest shapes. So we can change this by coming over and clicking on this invert. So if we invert it and now press create, we find it works the other way around. So where we've got light colors creates larger clones and where it's darker, it creates smaller clones. So that's basically how it works. The other thing we're going to use when we're creating our image is we're going to use our shift tab up here. So the shift tab is for how much it spaces things out. The default is to put the tile clones side by side. So it, it moves it a hundred percent of the tile size along. So we get this nice coverage. When I'm using it for um, photos, I like it to be a little bit denser than that. So what I do is put 50% up here and 50% up here. And we need to exclude tiles. So like I said before, the default is it for it moves it 100% automatically. We don't want it to move it automatically. We just now want it to move 50% over and 50% down. So we press create and see what it does. So now because we've got this overlap, we're getting a lot more solid color in the middle and you can see we've got more graduated tones coming away. So this is how we're going to create our image from our photo. Another thing I quickly want to mention just before we move on to actually creating our image, because these are all clones, whatever we do to our shape gets reproduced in each of the clones. So we can rotate it, change the shape, we can change the color and all of the clones will follow. When we finish creating our design, there's a good chance that you'll want the clones to be independent of the original shape. There's two ways we can go about doing that. We can either delete the shape 
So with it selected, we can just press delete and get rid of it. Now each of these is an individual um, path in its own right. The other way we can do it is come up to edit, come down to clone, and then down to unlink clone. And that will unlink our clones from our original shape. Right, let's get on and create our image. First thing I need to do is import my reference image. So I'm going to come up to File, down to Import. And here I've got the image that I'm going to use for this project. So we can double click on the image to open it up. I'm going to OK to the settings. And that's imported our image. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to hold down Control to constrain the proportions so we don't misshape it. And I'll hold down Shift so we scale around the center. So if we just drag this in a touch, we can bring it down to a nice size on our page. So now we've got it imported, we can see that the skin tones on this are quite dull at the moment. I want to brighten these up. So I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to go to Filters. I'm going to come down to Color. And then I'm going to come down to Grayscale. So this is for turning images into black and white. We move that off to one side. So we can put on the Preview, Live Preview. And then we can adjust each of these to get it in the position that gives us the best image. So I want my skin tones to be quite bright. I want to make sure that I keep the black areas black. This is because if we've got a grey background, we'll end up with lots of little spots from our, um, from our clones. We don't want that. We just want the white spots on the areas of the face and neck. So I'm just going to adjust this until I'm happy with it. Might be a little bit too much. I'm going to reduce the brightness slightly because I can see some grey up here above the hair. So if we just bring that down slightly, darken it up, that looks a lot darker up the top now. So I think I'm happy with that image. So I'm going to come down and press apply to set that and then we can get rid of our dialog box. So the next thing we need to do is find out exactly what size area we're going to cover with our image. So I'm going to come over, get the rectangle tool. I'm going to drag out a rectangle roughly where I want it, somewhere around here. I'm going to come down. I'm going to left click on the X to get rid of the fill color and then hold down shift and we can click on the red. It's already done, but we'll do it anyway to give it a red border so we can see our rectangle. So now we can adjust this till it's just got um, the areas of the image that we want to reproduce. So now we can take the dimensions of the rectangle and use it to fill out our little area over here so we can get our width and height correct. So if we look up here, we've got 160 by 114. So we can just put those in over here. We can check the dimensions of the same again. So we've got millimeters here, millimeters at the top. So we know we're right. Next thing I need to do is create a tile that we can clone. So I'm going to hold down control so I can constrain it to a perfect square and I'm just going to drag out a square to use as our tile. I'm going to turn the fill color white. I'm going to hold down shift and click on the X to get rid of the stroke color. So now I want to rotate this so it's a diamond. So I'm going to come over and get my selection tool. I'm going to click on our square again to get rotation handles. And then if we hold down control, we can just slowly rotate it round till it's in the right position. I want to scale this down. So I want to reduce this down till it's roughly the right size. So we need to click on it again to get our scaling handles. I'm going to hold control. I'm just going to move it in. I think I want it round about two, two millimeters wide. A bit too far. Ah, we'll stick there. And then I'm going to move it into position. So I'm going to get hold of it. I'm just going to drag it down and drop it on the top corner of our rectangle. Now we've got everything set up. We want to get rid of this rectangle. So I'm going to select the rectangle, press delete need to select my little tile again and we can come over and check we've got everything set in our create tile clones dialog box so we've got simple translation we've got our dimensions down the bottom in shift we've got our 50 percent uh, shift in the y axis on the rows and 50 percent shift on the x axis for the columns we're excluding the tiles so all it does is move our clones along by half the width of our tile over in trace We've got uh, trace the drawing underneath, which is ticked. We've taken the lightness from the image. We're going to invert it so that we get the larger clones are where the image is brightest. And 
we're going to be changing our size. So with all that set, we press create, we can create our image. Now this may take a little while because we are creating quite a lot of clones. So I've sped this up a bit because it was taking quite a lot of time. At the moment, we can't really see how our image looks because we've got the photo underneath. So I'm going to come up, get my rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle to cover the whole area of our image. I'm going to turn it black because we've got a lot of clones, 20,431 to be exact. We don't want to be going down one clone at a time. So what I'm going to do is get my selection tool. I'm going to drop this rectangle right down to the bottom so we can come up to the top here. Click on this, drop to the bottom of the stack, and then I'm just going to raise it up one to sit it on top of the image or the photo. And then we can see the half tone effect that we've created. Of course, you can adjust this if you decide that that's too detailed and you want it to look a little bit more pop arty. We could go back and make our tile a little bit bigger and have another go. So I've just reproduced the image. I made my little tile two millimeters by two millimeters. Obviously, when I recreate the image, you need to make sure that you take your black background and drop it below the photo so you can see the photo again. Then I just came over and pressed create and created a new image. Now, this has created considerably less clones. I've only got 15,987 clones this time, and I think I'm happy with this image. So this is how I'm going to leave it. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.